Hello, and welcome to Stories from the View, a podcast from the Pleasant View Senior Center in East Longmeadow, Massachusetts. On this podcast, we invite East Longmeadow residents to tell us their stories about their lives and events. I'm Eric Elmendorf, and today our guests are Beth Wadden and Sheila Magalhaes. They are both residents, longtime residents of East Longmeadow, and they're here to tell their stories. So ladies... I don't know, Beth. Maybe you want to you want to start. You've yeah, been a resident start, of East Long Meadow for fifty five yep. years. Yep, happily so. Um, I actually was born in the Boston area in nineteen thirty nine. So now I'm eighty three, and um, let's see. Grew up in West Roxbury, and then um, when I married at nineteen. Um, my husband was stationed in Kaneohe, Hawaii, so um, off we went to Kaneohe, Hawaii for three years. He was in the Marine Corps, and um, so that was 1959 to 1962. And then happily for us, in 1960, Sheila was born, so she's with me this morning. <laughs> and then in 61, my son Joe was born in Hawaii, and in 62, my daughter Betsy was born in Hawaii as well. So I came home. Joe and I came home with three kids and had two more. We moved to Situate, Mass. And then um, from Situate, Mass, he had a job opportunity out here in Western Mass. So that was in 1967. And we moved here to East Longmeadow in 1967. And... Um, I had never been like uh, uh, here in Western Mass, and I I've been charmed by the community here in Western Mass, and particularly East Long Meadow. So uh, let's see. When we moved here, Sheila was in the second grade, Joe was in the first grade, and we had a co op kindergarten back in those days, um, not the public kindergarten. So Susie and Betsy went to the co-op kindergarten. And then when Christine came along, that we did have public kindergarten in East Long Meadow. So anyway, Sheila and Joe went to center school, which I remember enjoying because it reminded me of my own elementary school. Um, and then center school was no more. So the kids began in our East Long Meadow public schools. Three of them went to this school uh, um, for primary, first grade, or oh, second grade. Oh, they came grade. here to, to Pleasant right View. Right here to Pleasant mm -hmm. View. So, you know, I, when I'm here and I am for senior events, um, I, I remember being here for parent conferences and just be, there was a little pool, a nice pool out here in the back of uh, the property. Oh. Um, not very deep, but, mm. you know, we thought this was like a big deal. And then the kids in the summertime would play at the center playground down at the center of town. There was a pool there, yeah, too. There was a waiting pool a, or a waiting something pool, there. But, yeah. I mean, they were in. Yeah. They were in all the time. So anyway, happily with Sheila here, I'm, I'm grateful. My other children have moved to Seattle to Palm Springs, California, to San Diego, to Minneapolis. And I'm very grateful that Sheila's in town because my life is rich and full because I'm Sheila's mom. So, <laughs> Sheila. <laughs> what have I got to say? Uh, yeah, Thanks, right. Mom. Yeah. What can you add to that? What can I add to that? Well, I, I remember coming from, well, first of all, when we were um, babies and we lived in Hawaii. So of course I don't remember any of that, but it was a really big part of our life mm -hmm. that we had been to Hawaii. Like it was very cool and exciting. And people, kids thought that it was like, oh, you're Hawaiian. And I didn't really know how to answer that. <laughs> it wasn't Hawaiian, but um, my middle name is Kalani <laughs> and my sister's middle name is Malia. Huh. And so we got the Hawaiian names. And Joe, of course, is Joseph Matthew Wadden III. He got dad's name, Grampy's name. Um, but being Hawaiian was fun because mom knew how to hula. And so she taught us all to hula. And so we used to get together and as kids and would have fun, you know, singing Hawaiian songs. And, and we still do. And we still do. <laughs> we 
can break into we can that bust at any out any time. It's really kind of crazy, but we can. Yeah. Um, and um, moving from Hawaii then to, of course, don't remember that, but Situate was a beach community. And we lived right up the street from the ocean, and it was beautiful. And it was the house that my grandfather had had built and that my dad had summered all his life. And then a town, a few towns over, was called Green Harbor. And that's where my mom and her family summered when they were young. And um, Green Harbor and Situate still have beautiful places in our hearts, and we still vacation there and tr mm -hmm. travel there and visit those beaches. Um, coming to East Long Meadow was kind of a shock because there was no ocean. <laughs> and um, we were used to being sort of like barefoot and in bathing suits and never fully dressed <laughs> somehow, you know, like just, it was always the beach, 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 beach. Even though I remember winters with snow up to our, you know, shoulders. But um, the beach was a big part of it. And I miss that. I, I always remember feeling like this yearning for the ocean. But um, East Long Meadow was a lot of fun, and my best friend Lori was just two or three houses down, and um, we were in second grade. We became fast best friends, played Barbies, and we danced around in the street, and we learned how to, um, we tried to take two um, soup cans and a string <laughs> and tried to talk to each other from our bedrooms, <laughs> but it didn't work. So instead I would go down the street, stand in front of our house and say, Lori, come out and play. <laughs> and the door would swing open and out, out she would come. Um, I just had a memory of, of Lori. Every time it would snow, we would go out into the street and sing and dance around to the weather outside is frightful but the fire is so delightful. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And now, <laughs> Lori and I from second grade now, where I'm 63 in March, um, still the first snowfall, no matter where we are in the world, we call each other and we sing. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you know that we do that, but you know, that's what we do. And so, you know, this is a, this is a beautiful small town. I still have girlfriends um, from, middle, from elementary, middle, high school and beyond, we call each other the girls. We're the girls. And um, luckily, we're very tight and close. And I remember one time I was getting busy running my business, and maybe we'll talk about heart song yoga, but um, I was always like too busy to get together with the girls. And mom said, um, her best friend had said to her, never miss an opportunity to get together with your girlfriends. It's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. yeah. That means setting aside time or carving out time. But um, that was a big turnaround, like, oh yeah, you know, this is really important, those roots and those connections. Um, center school was giant. It was like a big, giant, wooden structure in the top of a hill. And uh, it's right now where they have the, what was called the Little Red Schoolhouse. Yeah, isn't that, okay, is right? that where it was? Yep, okay. it, Little Red Schoolhouse yeah. used to be on the corner. We called it the Four Corners. It's where Forest Air Funeral Home was. And they moved it. I don't right. know what the date was. They they dug a, you know, what do they call that? A historical um, time capsule is there. Oh, right. Right? right. We put things in it. We put some it. things in mm -hmm. it, right. And they moved the schoolhouse. They did a whole ceremony. They did a time capsule. And that's where Center School was. And that's sort of behind St. Michael's Church. I think it's right. called School Street. Um, so Center School, and it had these rolling hills that went down and mm. steps that went down. And that's where we used to play for um, playground time. I had a troll a little plastic troll doll with a shock of red hair. And I remember, <laughs> that's what I remember playing with that. Do you remember trolls? It was a thing. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah these, little, these little guys. Um, they were ugly. They were really ugly, but they were super cute. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, my, mine unearthed several years ago and then, and then disappeared again, but maybe one day I'll find it. Um, but I remember playing on that hill. And uh, we also would sometimes... Um, if it snowed and we could like slide down the hill, probably sitting on <laughs> lunch trays or something, who knows? We still had um, boxed milk, no, milk bottles with a little paper mm -hmm. cover. Oh, right, 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 right. Right, yep. and we'd be downstairs having lunch with those um, glass bottles. I remember that. And um, we couldn't do jumping jacks for exercise. 
on the second floor because they said we were afraid that the floor would collapse <laughs> and that would all go down. So that was second grade. And then um, the school was gone, and then off we went to the you know more traditional schools, Mountain View and um, somewhere in Meadowbrook probably, and we all did Birchland Park, and then mm -hmm. we all went to the high school. So when I was in high school, there were four of us, four Wadden siblings at the same time at the school, if you can just picture that. And I was the oldest. <laughs> so you'd, you'd always run into a Wadden. And then even now today, people will look at me and say, you're a Wadden, right? That's you know, such which, a good which, which one are you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> which one are you? I'm the oldest. That's my, I'm the oldest. I'm Sheila. Um, and yeah, we lived on... Bain Street, and mom still lives on Bain Street. So how many years have you been there? 55. 55 years yeah. at Bain Street. Wow. And Sheila, my thinking when I was thinking about this podcast was um, just how lucky we are that we did land here in East Long Meadow. And um, I always thought, because I do have the five children, and yet I had um, gone to Westfield State, when we moved here to continue my education, I had only gone two years to college before I got married. And um, when we bought our home on Bain Street, I had said to the owners, they were both teachers, and I said, um, I, I don't know where to keep going to complete my degree work. And Jim Henderson had said, um, go to Westfield State. He said, it's affordable, and they have a wonderful teacher training program. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't look around at all the other schools. I went to Westfield State, and I was very <laughs> grateful with that decision. But my thinking about the town is, um, like, it took a village, like Hillary Rodham's Clinton's book right. title, took a village um, to <clears throat> raise the children um, so I felt as though we were so lucky to be right near the library mm -hmm. and right near the center field. And, um, you know, we were able to avail ourselves of the playground activities for the kids. There was always something fun happening here, still is in East Long Meadow. We would um, enjoy the 4th of July parades and the carnival and all the activities yeah, that all would be, within walking distance all within walking distance which was right. important because we had to walk right we we definitely walked right. i don't think there was an, a lot of driving, driving around. anywhere no. <laughs> and yeah. that was actually a blessing when the four of them were in high school that sure. for all their activities that all the kids just yeah they and, could and just... even birchland i think you all watched, we all watched to Berkeley. birchland, birchland mm -hmm. as well yep. maple shade i know you took the bus to mountain view sure but um just all all the things that were available the recreation department which is here also mm -hmm. in this building um you know what they would sign up for everything, everything for every softball team or baseball team or any, any activity and um i always felt that the kids were in good hands and in our neighborhood too wonderful wonderful neighbors and still wonderful neighbors. It's been a, such such a delightful community to um, grow up in and evolve. So we, you know, we're both wearing our Heart Song t-shirts here. And um, she, Sheila began that right here in town. And how did that happen? Yeah, She's how like, did you gosh. get started on that? <laughs> That's a big journey, right? Well, let's see, let's see, let's see. I was, um, hmm, oh, I was, well, let's, let's go back to high school, right? And I studied graphic design. And I was in the collaborative program, so when I was a senior every year, every day, I got on a bus and I went to Westside and studied graphic arts. Mm -hmm. And that was a real privilege for me. I mean, I, well, I think as the oldest of five, there was always this drive to like, well, how are we gonna do college? Right. What are we going to do? There's five kids, right? We're all the same age, basically. Um, and everyone in my family had, had something that brought them there. Like Joe and his, he was such an amazing athlete, my brother Joe. And he went to the, um, 
what's the name of his Norwich Norwich Univers Academy, Norwich yes. Norwich University in Vermont in Vermont and of course that included education and a commitment to the military mm -hmm. that's what Joe did and Betsy was an amazing um, cross country runner and runner and athlete and she went to um, Springfield College which is such a athletic that was college a blessing. so good Susie yeah. Susie and Chrissy went to UMass which and, was a blessing which was a blessing they it was so wonderful and I went to I was doing graphic design and I loved it and I went to STCC and I did graphic arts and I loved that and then instead of continu continuing on I got a job silk screen printing so this is kind of backwards but it it's, works. it's very important yeah. because I was in silk screen printing for about 11 years. I was running the art department. I loved it. But they gave me the job of being the material safety data person to yep. open up the paperwork of every uh, big, you know, 50-gallon drum of lacquer right. thinner, all the paints, all the inks, all the stuff, the solvents. And they were all carcinogenic, mutagenic, and reproductive hazards. Mm -hmm. And I was breathing in daily all of this all of these chemicals i was dipping my hands into them i we didn't mask up we didn't wear gloves we we dumped stuff. it was like unbelievable we just didn't know yeah i mean just, we just didn't know that's how it was yeah those days. you didn't yeah. know people if they yeah. knew they kind of like didn't pay attention right as soon as i knew i was like I, I can't do this i was newly married i got married in 84 met my husband tony here in town uh, he's from indian orchard um Portuguese, fabulous guy, great. We just had this wonderful, you know, romance and a fabulous wedding. Remember how fun that was? And so Marvelous good, so fun, good. Sheila. And we bought a house in town. We couldn't believe it. We were like, whoa, we got a house in town. We're so excited and we're living our life, but we want to have a family and I'm doing this work. And I said, I got to go. I can't, I can't stay. Um, I asked for more, more support. I asked for ventilation and it was really, no, mm-mm. It's not happening. I left. I just left. And um, then just really we, we downsized our lifestyle. We, the kids were going to be a priority. And I did have two, I have two beautiful children um, who both were uh, born really early and um, s spent lots of time in the hospital. And I was caring for my kids. And it was really scary. Uh, Libby was, Nick was born in 1988. He was four and a half pounds. Cute little guy. Mm. Yeah. Libby was born in 1990. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, you, you hadn't come back to Westfield. Yet. Oh yeah. Well then I went back to school too. So I was going back to school <laughs> and I was working part-time locally. And then I was working part-time downtown at a law firm and going to school at night because mom paved the way for that. She really showed us that we could do that, go to school at night, and raise a family, and you know, continue my education. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so what were you going to school for? Well, at that point? I was going for business. I was going for business because okay. as a, the art director of this company, that was sort of a good uh, direction to go, mm -hmm. but then I left the company, but I was in the middle of school. I would start and stop a million times because I was like, why am I doing this? This is hard work. It's hard to get in the car and drive to Westfield at night and take a class or two and go during the summer and, and just keep going, but I kept going. I remember I almost changed majors and my um, advisor was like, what are you, crazy? <laughs> I just finished this degree. Yeah, yeah you're almost done <laughs> what are now. You doing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But really, the babies were the priority, but it was challenging, difficult. Libby was um, two and a half pounds when she was born. She spent three months at Bay State. Nick was just about two. And life was really challenging. And a very wise friend said, you should go to yoga. And I said, eh, I don't like yoga. I tried it. <laughs> you know, I dabbled in it before. She says, really, really, you should try yoga. And I went to a class. And I just was like, whoa, I fell in love with it. It was the, the practice for me was for my physical self, but also for my mental, emotional self. And people don't know that about yoga. They think it's just exercise or you're going to be bendy. Well, it's, a, right? it's a spiritual thing it in totally some ways. It totally is. It's yeah. body, mind, spirit. It mm -hmm. really is. And you can take from it what you want. You can, you can, you can really dive into the philosophy and the lifestyle and, and this really, which is all about being kind. Right, Mom? Oh, that's, that's like Sheila's that's what mantra. I always like to say. It's just about being kind to one another. Right? But over time, this yoga thing really got a hold of me. 
and also the holistic lifestyle that I that had started on a path. You know, you realize there's carcinogens out in the world. There's toxins out in the world. There's a there's a problem with recycling. There's a problem with, you know, the the water that we're drinking or the food that we're eating. There was chemicals in the apples, and the applesauce was poisonous. I mean, like the whole world was like, what? <laughs> and you just start to wake up a little bit, and you want to make a difference. I wanted to offer to other people what I had learned, and I started very slow, very small. It was in 1993. Um, Didn't you graduate college and yoga teacher training at the, the same, same time? The same something? week. The same week. I was up, <laughs> I was up at the Kripalu Center for Yoga and Health. My kids were in preschool. The only way to get yoga teacher training was in this in in the Northeast and almost you know in the country anywhere. You'd have to go away and you'd have to go away for a month. So I arranged my life with my kids who were three and five to go away for a month which back then seemed like a huge mountain to climb, mm. this giant endeavor, this amazing, incredible, and scary thing. And also people thought I was kind of crazy because yoga was sort of, what would they say? Unknown. It was unknown. It was earthy, crunchy, airy, fairy. <laughs> it was the yeah. Beatles, I think. And <laughs> it was, it was. It was a hippie thing, you know, yeah. which appealed to my artistic heart and uh, my kind of wild side that I loved. I just loved it. Um, but we lined it up so the kids were in really good hands because mom said it took a village. Yeah. You know, and they were it in preschool. It worked. It worked They fine. worked. They were at Busy Bee Preschool and they were, had all their friends. And my husband stayed home one day a week. My sister Susie watched them one day a week. They were at their neighbors the other time. They yeah. didn't, they, what I taught them was that mom could go away and then come back. I had things that I needed to do and I would return and I would be a better mother for and having Tony done that. brought the kids up for the weekend. Every or, Sunday. Yeah. He, he, would, he would drive up every Sunday. So it wasn't like, it was a month, which seemed like forever. But now when I look back, it was just this tiny little drop in the ocean. Yeah. A teensy, tiny little drop. Because now we're almost 30 years later and, and yeah, you've yeah. got your cent yeah. center. Yeah, so. it is 30 years. It'll yeah. be 30 years this year. Mom said, I said, Mom, this is going to be the biggest thing that I will ever do in my life. And she said, Sheila, it's the first of many wonderful, <laughs> big things you will do in your life. True. And then she would say, don't stop before the miracle happens. Yeah. Because running a small business as a woman in an alternative kind of a, um, you know, um, industry, sure. the wellness industry wasn't really around back then. There weren't mm. magazines. There weren't websites. The internet wasn't happening. There was no cell phone. Um, people didn't know about yoga. You couldn't look it up. I tried to look it up. So yes, mom, I studied. I was at Westfield State. My final presentation was developing, because I went from business to marketing, developing a yoga studio. As a project. As a project. For college. For college. Nice. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Hello. That's what I yeah. was developing. And I did all that research, which meant going to, the going to the library to get on the computer to look for things. And there was hardly anything, because people weren't writing about it, talking about it. But there were some wonderful... Um, um, physicians out there, uh, um, Dean Ornish and Deepak Chopra and um, who did the reversing heart disease? What was his name? Um, and he used yoga and meditation. Um, there was mindfulness, which was John Kabat-Zinn. Mm -hmm. So there are a few pioneers out there mm -hmm. and others that I probably, you know, just didn't know about. But um, so I, I was, I developed that program. I did the presentation I went away to yoga teacher training. My husband picked me up at Kripalu, which was in the Berkshires, mm -hmm. with my cap and gown, drove me down to Westfield. I went through the ceremony because I wanted to walk with, with everyone. And then um, he drove me back. We, I think I spent the night, had a little party. That's right. And he drove me back to Kripalu. And then that weekend I graduated from yoga teacher training. And then I had the audacity to open a business. <laughs> <laughs> Just like six months later. <laughs> and um, that's what I did. I just jumped in. My husband said, do whatever you want, but stay out of my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a reasonable rule. <laughs> that's bad, right? You know, whatever. And uh, just, just, and I just, we just started slow. No big plan. No big, I, you know, I had visions. I had dreams. I had ideas. But I just, it just unfolded with divine order. And every time I thought, 
we, were, we weren't going to make it, something fabulous would happen. Right. Somebody would come in. Some wonderful person would show up. Somebody, something would unfold. And moving to 264 North Main, I think, which is where Heart Song is now, mm -hmm. I think was absolutely fabulous because yep. it's a, a very inviting, welcoming place yep. and plenty of parking. Right, plenty of parking. <coughs> there isn't any place in town that has parking like Heart Song Yoga. There really isn't. I look right. around. Right. Um, it's 30 years. We spent just under three years on West Harkness, uh, Harkness Avenue okay. in a little place above Sam's Hair Affair. Mm -hmm. which is... And nails. And nails. <laughs> yeah. We, Tony and I were going at night and we'd pack the walls and we'd blow in insulation because it wasn't the perfect spot. It was kind of noisy. It had some chemical smell, which I was completely against, mm -hmm. all of that. But we did everything we could to make a little sweet spot. We could maybe have 11 people in there. Now, and then Mom's friend, who had the Northwest... Mm -hmm. Northeast... What was it called? North, insurance. Northwest Mutual <coughs> Life Insurance mm -hmm. Company was at 264 North Main Street, which mm -hmm. was an office building. It only says 264 North Main on the sign. Doesn't say anything about anyone in the building. It's right next to the reminder. Right. So it doesn't say Heart Song Yoga. For 30 years, I haven't had a sign. <laughs> and, but there we are, and people know where we are. Um, it was this empty space, 24,000 square feet giant. Wow. And, and he said, look, it's been empty two years. I want to rent it to you. I said, it's too big. He said, well, you'll grow. I said, I'm terrified. He said, you'll grow. He said, I'll start you slow. I'll start raising the rent because you're going to grow. Mom said, go for it. We went in. We gutted the place. We tore down walls. We opened it up, but not too much because I couldn't even imagine being that big. 24,000 square feet, sure. 2,400. Oh, 2,400, I was going to say. 2,400, I said 1,000. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thousand. You did. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, like, that would be like, what? That's, a, that's yeah. like a giant. No, number. I was like. 2,400. That's a lot of yoga. That's a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way more than we ever needed. We went from 600 square feet to yeah. 2,400. Sorry, okay, gotcha. Um, anyways, so the, the yoga, he was right. It just We just slowly started to grow slowly. And then he's like, I'm going to sell it to you. I was like, what? That yeah. was a good move, too, though. That was the best thing ever. Yeah. Because... Fast forward to, uh, well, not only I was teaching, my mom went to yoga teacher training, my husband went to yoga teacher training. Your sister went to yoga teacher yeah, training. Yeah, my other sister went to yoga teacher training. And then another training. sister did yoga teacher training last year, and right now my youngest daughter, who is a, a school teacher too, um, is doing yoga teacher training in San Diego. Kind of runs in the family. Yeah. I guess. We don't yeah. quite know how, but it does. It really, really, really does. Yeah. It's kind of fun. It catches on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People love it. It's a beautiful practice. It's good for every part of us and every age. And I teach seniors and we teach, um, oh. you know, kids and we teach youngsters and teenagers and... Athletes. Athletes, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So, Grown Beth, I, yeah, I was going to ask. So, you started to get into, into yeah, yoga you know, as she'd well. she'd say, do you want to come to my yoga class? I'd be like, no. Do you want to come? Come to my yoga class, and I'd be like, no. Because you were doing what? You were here at the senior center. I was doing aerobics right here. Right. At Pleasant View. And um, then I did go accompany Sheila when she went to get gather information about yoga at Kripalu Center. And that's, I think, when I went to my first yoga class. Because you thought, like, wow. oh, my gosh, if you're going to do that, Sheila, if you're going to do this for, you want to do this for your world, for your life, I better maybe. Know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what I felt, Eric? Um, at that very first class, we were in the Berkshires, in a room, in a building, um, the Kripalu Center, um, with other people being peaceful. It was a, I, I thought to myself, here I am, like, in the mountains, Berkshire Mountains, um, in a room, and yet I know this would have a ripple effect into the world if there's even just a, a group of people being peaceful. And it was something that was never part of my life. I'm one of eight kids. I have five. was a school teacher for 48 years. Um, it's like I never, I, I mean, I go to church all the time. I still, but I didn't think about p being peaceful or the world having an opportunity to be peaceful, but, um, you know, our, our folks that come in for to do yoga, um, they, they might have various 
physical ailments. We would lovingly call it the heart song rehab for our shoulders and knees and hips and mm -hmm. eh, emotions and all of that. They always leave feeling better. They do, and they, and they return. And they'll say, oh, thank you. You know, this was exactly what I needed. And uh, so I'm grateful, you know, to be part of it. Yeah, so so you just mentioned that you were a teacher for yeah, 48 years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, well, where I, where I, were you a teacher? Were well, you here in town? when I graduated from Westfield, yep. and I had the five kids, but I filled out in, uh, resumes for uh, mm -hmm. applications mm -hmm. to teach in 1972, and... Um, oh... It was, let's see, what was it? It was a special day. It was a, a day in August, um, and I had actually gone to church that morning. It was a, um, the Assumption. The assumption. <laughs> I had walked to church. I walked home. Um, that was another nice thing about Bain Street, being near the church and the high school and the dentist and the doctor and you name it. <laughs> Everybody was right there. Sure. Um, but anyway, I got a phone call from Enfield, and they said, uh, could I come down for an interview? And I, I went down at, at noon. I'm like, what time? And they said, noon time. I'm like, that's fine. I went down for an interview sitting like this. And, <clears throat> and then um, that afternoon, the telephone rang. And um, they said that I had the job. And I'm like, well, like, what job? And they're like, fourth grade. You're going to teach fourth grade. And uh -huh. I'm like, whoa. I remember running out of the house, running around the yard, running to my next door neighbor, Eileen, Eileen, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher. And I had that excitement for 48 years. And, and then when I retired, which was June 20th of, uh, June 30th of 2020, in the pandemic, oh. so I we were all sent home that March, <laughs> um, told that, you know, maybe we'd be back the next day, but they gave the kids two weeks' work in a manila envelope, mm -hmm. and they said to the teachers, take your electronics. So I had my laptop. I brought my laptop, home, school laptop home, and I had my home laptop March, April, May, June, teaching f from my kitchen mm -hmm. on my laptop, trying to get, God bless the children, trying to come in on their computers and multi-kids in a family, and sometimes multi-kids in a family and their mother a teacher. Everybody, you know, complicated. So and then uh, I was in the breakfast room, and a, a ray of light came through, and it's, I was 80 at the time, by the way. So um, it came through, and it just said, Beth, retire, <laughs> and, and do it today. That's what it said. <laughs> and so, as so we had a faculty meeting on screen with all... I, never th I don't think I saw the principal again after March, because we were just little circles right. on the screen. And... Um, as soon as that was over, then I called the Connecticut Retirement Board. Was it possible? It was the day after Memorial Day mm -hmm. in 2020. And they said if I worked fast with my paperwork, I could do it, of and course. you had already done a lot of prep. Like, you had, you had been preparing. Not that you wanted to. She'd say, if you ask mom, do you want to retire? Why I've aren't you retiring? She'd say, it. absolutely not. Right. Hmm. Nope, 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 right, nope. Nope. Which leads me to being a grown-up in town, you know, and a person. I'm, I'm excited to, like, be retired and be in East Long Meadow. And, like, you know, Eric, because I was part of the, I always wanted to be one of, in the St. Michael's players, but I was working. I thought I didn't have time. And then retired. I'm, I contacted Rose. I'm like, what's coming up? And so that that's when we met, Eric, yes. as far as... Being in, well, um, and and I'll have to say, you brought the house down. Yeah, that was a lot did. of fun. With that song that you did in our <laughs> yeah, Back no to time Broadway at all. Show. That yeah, was so much yeah, fun. Yeah, it was so so beautiful. You yeah. were the one who yeah. said, you know, she's gonna steal the show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you did. That was a lot of fun. And then and then to be in Anna Green Gables, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I go to activities right here at Pleasant View. So, but thanks to Sheila, she brought me here for some sort of a 
potpourri of activities. Yeah, yeah. It was a um, like a sampler day, and we right. were outside, and they we got to. Um, I taught some yoga, and the Tai Chi teacher came in, and the uh, line dancing teacher, and maybe a fitness professional. Yeah. Um, I think mm-hmm. we've done that maybe twice in mm-hmm. the summertime. Yeah. Just it's a um, something that they had put on by the senior center. And I was like, mom, come with me. And, and I'm um, like, oh, nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I went with her. Yeah. And then you were like, wow, this is kind of cool. Because you said oh. that retirement might be boring, sad, I and lonely. Mm. I couldn't I thought it would be like lonely. I could only picture my house and the walls. And... Um, But it isn't at all, and I do enjoy coming down here. We come Mm. for festivities and activities and special events, and I was in the talent show. You know what, (laughs) Eric, I sang that song. I missed the talent show. In the talent show show here. That was funny. Unfortunately. Um, But Sheila was here. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) It's fun for me. I I belong here at the Senior Center, too. Right, right. (laughs) Well, it's so funny now (laughs) that we, we went to the movies. I went to the movies with Sheila and her girlfriend, and um, I had called the Enfield Cinema to see what age was seniors, and um, the the response was 60. So there I am (laughs) with my daughter and her classmate, you know, from grammar school. I'm like, girls, you're 60 now. Three senior tickets, please. (laughs) (laughs) So, and we do that, you know, and we, and we have fun together. But, um, I love coming here to this school for the line dance class. Very, very congenial, Mm -hmm. very, very active and festive and, um, so much more lively than I had expected. You know, it's just, everybody's smiley and you know it, it's a wonderful environment here right. yeah. yeah it's beautiful and building. i sign up for yeah. lunch People i are. have to be gluten free so i i know a lot of things on the menu wouldn't be gluten free and then i check with alan the chef mm-hmm. and we go over it and he'll say oh, that's fine that's fine oh no he goes i too much flour in that kind of thing don't so um you know i'm i'm here for all of the meals that are are gluten free and always very interesting people to chat with. Amazing, you know, people who. Last time I was here, just a couple of days ago, a lady it was her first time here. Uh, oh, I, she she was so interesting, and she had a walker. She had fallen, and um, you know she was just distressed that she was held back because of the walker, but. Um, but she was here, and we had such a nice conversation, and you know, that happens no matter who I sit down with. It's like the people are very interesting to talk to. So it's really true. It's a it's a great community yeah. feel that you that you get here, right. and yeah. it's professionally run. Yeah. And you know, yeah, yeah, all the staff here are great. Right, starting yeah. right when yeah. you come in the yeah. door it's and you stop yeah. at the, yeah. the window, it's like okay, you it's know, happy to place. help. But friendly. you're not totally retired because she's teaching two yoga classes a week. Oh yeah, that's fun. At Heart Song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And, and then and yeah. Sheila teaches too at Brownstone. <laughs> yeah. Which is a retirement. Oh yeah. Community yeah. Sure. Here. yeah. 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 And yeah, it's um, a free it's a free class. It's sponsored by the Visiting Angels. And okay. co- mm-hmm. it's co opted with the senior center. And we're also teaching a class um, at Heart Song on March. 31st, 31st at 1 o'clock. And it's a free class. and we've, It's in our bulletin. It's in this bulletin. Yeah, here. and we've worked it out with the town trolley to pick people up who might not be able to normally come out. So oh, that's that's an experiment mm. because I'm interested in, um, you know, being a part of the community here and, and with the seniors because my mom's here. and Yeah, and when she <laughs> can be at that Monday class over at Brownstone, I'll sub for her. Yeah. I... One gal's a hundred, yeah. right? Gloria. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, Gloria's yeah. there? Yeah. 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 Gloria Shock. was at the Christmas party, and there's one guy who goes. I heard there was another guy. No, no, one guy who goes. Just one. Chuck. Chuck. But anyway. And he's 92. He had, he had come to Pleasant View for the Christmas party, and so did Sheila, and a, a young friend who was in Joe's class, but he's in a wheelchair. And, um, and Gloria was here, and Chuck, who goes to the gentle yoga class he's going to be 92 92. yeah um and I say to him my god you are so handsome (laughs) (laughs) he is I'm like he's become a he's become a dear friend um of of mine I it's really wonderful to have the elders 
to kind of fall in love with. And, um, yeah. you know, my dad's been gone for 23 20, years. 23, 24 years. 23 years, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So there's like, it's wonderful to be in the mix of ages and to uh, enjoy those relationships. Right. And then the, the vitality that That's people it. feel, right? Yeah. And the yoga offers that vitality and that excitement. And even if you're sitting in a chair and then standing up and using a chair for support, there's so many benefits to the, the peacefulness, the mindfulness, the quiet, yeah. and also just the moving of the body and yeah. the joints and the mobility and then the balance. When people feel like they can stand on one foot, and Sounds how nice to them they have a chair nearby. To hold on to, yep. Sure. But if you can yeah. feel that confidence, that means if you're stepping out into the world, uneven ground, you know, cobblestones, you, you know, walking out to your car, whatever it is, you you feel like, hey, I've got core strength. I can I'm, I'm, I can navigate. I feel confident, and and that means that you're more able to be out in the world in a full and yeah. you know excited way. But mom teaches. Uh, Sunday night and Monday night. Sunday nights and all levels. Six o'clock, all levels. And, and Monday night, it's supposedly a gentle class. We say supposedly because because I just I like to move. <laughs> so it's okay. not really good. <laughs> but the thing is too about um, the seniors uh, is how lively they are. They all come in. Oh, chatter, 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 yes. chatter. Yep. Uh, I I think they all. I think everybody looks adorable. I think everybody is funny. Um, they're so excited, you know, all, all their, all the different ages. Um, and then it, it, they enjoy being together too. Yeah. They all know. know each other and or, yeah. or they are happy to meet one another. Yeah. And mom's teaches not just the class, but she also does teach on a screen because everything we do is hybrid now. Oh, so yeah, how since about the that? pandemic, we closed. Oh, we're so modern. Yeah, we are so <laughs> modern. We closed <laughs> yeah. for five months. The brick and mortar was closed. Mm -hmm. March, April, May, June, July, August, we started coming in with the mandates. We could have five students uh, 18 feet apart. So that meant I could only have five people in this giant room that was over a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. And then me teaching and everybody in masks. And I taught to a screen and people came in from all over the country and even around the world. Yeah, people that's so show up from France and from Australia. Australia. <laughs> and, um, we have folks from the West Coast, middle. They, it's my sisters come every day from California. Right. It's such a blessing, and so we learned how to do this live stream. And I'm looking at all this equipment here. You know, the microphone and the computer and and the the, the lights. And we figured it out. And we have like a little TV studio. Um, and I started a YouTube channel because I thought we were closed for two weeks, and I wanted my students to have classes. So I just mm -hmm. put up my phone and I clicked record and I started recording myself. And I mean, we were just out of our minds. What are we going to do? How do we keep this business alive? What's going to happen next? And it was terrifying. Yeah. And we, we just went on it. We figured it out. Owning our space meant that I didn't have a landlord. People who had to pay their landlord and were closed for five months yeah. couldn't do it. People who didn't have enough space. A lot of yoga teachers. So many, of... so many people in my industry just they couldn't they couldn't maintain. Mm -hmm. I have friends who lost their businesses, and we just prevailed. And when the students started coming back, then I could have ten people in the room, and then we did know, everything Charlie Baker. Said. Everything he said, we did it. He he would every Tuesday. I think he would make a yeah. pronouncement. Where are we at with right. the pandemic? What what's allowable and what's not? Yeah. And we were so careful. Yep. Sheila was we so careful. We had zero transmissions. It was unbelievable. People were so respectful. The teachers did what they had to do. The students did what they had to do. We put plexiglass Ooh, around us teaching. I had walls around us. We put tape on the floor. We did everything. And it seems like a dream, uh, like, like a little bit of a nightmare <laughs> of, of sorts. People are still recovering from this yes. time. And I feel like people have a lot of trauma I think the, the, the children suffered, the teenagers suffered, the adults had trauma. We didn't have loss personally to mourn, but a lot of people did. And so, you know, there was a lot of loss, whether it was yeah. someone they loved or a lifestyle or a way of being or... So we're coming from that time and we're recovering and we're coming back. And I think every day there's a celebration of like, oh my God, life, life, community, friends, 
Yes. We're together. Oh my gosh, we're together. This is amazing. We can't take that for granted mm-hmm. ever again. You know, it's just, it I think means a lot. There's, there were, there were lessons to be learned and, um, you know, even taking care of the environment, taking care of the world so that we can continue on and do our work. Yeah, strange, strange times we've mm-hmm. been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing really good, and we're really happy to share this with you. Um, anything to wrap up yeah. or questions? Uh, just gratitude, gratitude. Yes. That's another every um, day, every day gratitude. Another mantra. Yeah. Just yeah. gratitude. Yeah. You know, I drive around town. I'm grateful. I go down Maple Street. I'm grateful. Yeah. You know, Elm Street. I'm grateful. Any around the Rotary. <gasps> Imagine 55 years going around the Rotary. Um, <laughs> um, and, and only one fender bender. <laughs> I didn't do it in the Rotary. Yeah. I oh. only I ran out of gas once in the Rotary. No. <laughs> and it was back when there was an Esso station yes. uh, in the, at the corner. Yeah. And, and I remember the police came around the Rotary, and they're like, Billy, because it was Bill Foote. He, it was his S- Get that girl out of here! And they just like pushed me into the gas station. <laughs> when, when we were teenagers, we would drive around the rotary as many times as we could until the police would come. <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't—they weren't like after us or anything because they didn't know we were driving around the rotary. We we're just like, how many times can you go around the rotary? And we're just going. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, rotary that's a lot of yeah. We used to do headstands in the rotary in the snow. When the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but our mantra at Heart Song is we say peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, and peace in our world. And we really truly believe that. What you do individually impacts others and then it spreads out. So, you know. Make a commitment to be kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice message. Well, thank you, ladies, for coming in and being on our show here. It's been a great honor to talk to the both of you. Great stories, great information, and a great message from you. Thanks, Eric. So thank thank you you very much for being here. We're going to close out now. So that uh, wraps up another episode of Stories from the View. We'd like to thank Sheila and Beth. And Sheila, I can't say your last name again. Natalie Hayes. Magal Hayes. Magal Hayes. Let's say okay. Portuguese. Magal okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Beth Watt. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. The Stories from the View podcast is available on the LCAT 01028 channel on YouTube. If you have a story that you'd like to share on the program, contact Pleasant View Senior Center Director Aaron Kobler by stopping by the Pleasant View Senior Center. You can call Aaron at 413-525-5436, extension 1401, or or send her an email, aaron.kobler at eastlongmeadowma.gov. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on Stories from the View.